So let's go ahead and add an if statement on there and say if we deposit, then we want to sleep until our new condition, which is uh, the inventory is no longer full. So the inventory dot is full, oops, is full, and we negate that is full, and let's sleep for another eight seconds just to be sure there's no lag. Um, so then let's put another if statement around there and say if we, so basically it has deposited everything and our inventory is no longer full. So if it is not full, then we have two options. We can either close the bank, we can say get bank uh, close, or we can just ignore this entire thing and it should start back over uh, finding the closest tree and chopping it down. But for the purposes of creating a good banking method, we're going to go ahead and say get bank dot close. And we'll put another if around there and say if we close the bank, uh, sleep until uh, the bank is no longer open is open and we negate that and let's wait for eight seconds again so let's go ahead and create a new area for our trees uh, the one by drain our bank is kind of shitty so I've run over here to this good uh, tree area and let's start by adding the tile that we're standing on right here which will be our top uh, left corner and we will get the coordinates here, so 3092. And we'll just copy and paste this and call it tree area. And remove everything inside there. And we'll just say 3092. 3925, I'm pretty sure. 3295. That would be a horrible mistake. Always make sure your areas are correct. And then let's get our bottom right. And we already know we're on the Z coordinate of zero, so that's easy. And this will be our bottom right point down here. Actually, let's make it a little closer about here. Yeah, that looks nice. Wait, maybe in one. Can we do that? Okay. So 3108. And then follow that by 3, 2, 8, 1, and 0. Great. So now, if our inventory is not full, let's just go ahead and remove this from this if statement and say, if our inventory is not full, if uh, tree area that contains get local player then go ahead and do all of the rest of this nonsense right so we're just gonna cut down the logs in here and let's raise this to 12 seconds instead of 8 because it was taking a while to cut down the logs um, otherwise uh oh right our area tree area does not contain the local player well, crap, how do we do that? Easy peasy. DreamBot has a web walker that is pretty much flawless, and we'll skip all walking tutorials by just saying get walking dot walk tree area dot get nearest tile. Actually, let's go ahead and say dot get center tile, right? Because sometimes the nearest tile doesn't actually put you into the area it just kind of puts you next to it and the bot freaks out and never gets inside the area so we'll say the center and uh, we'll, we'll go from there so if right so we'll create this as an boolean statement if we actually go and walk uh, that's not we're inside of it that just means that it's clicked on the mini map or the main viewport to start walking. So if we start walking and sleep for, let's say, calculations.random, uh, let's say three, 
seconds to six seconds. Okay. Um, and we could do a more complicated walking method here by using a sleep until. Uh, however, that's a little too complex for a basic tutorial. Um, so now it'll, if it's not in the inventory, it will walk to the inventory. Or excuse me, if it's not in, <laughs> not in the area, it will walk to the area. And then if it is in the area, it will chop down a tree and collect logs until the inventory is full. At which point in time, it will come down here and say, oh, the inventory is full. Uh, if the bank contains a local player, then bank. And let's go ahead and make our walking statement for if the bank area does not contain uh, the player and our inventory is full. So we'll say uh, get walking. Well, we can actually just go ahead and copy this and just change the area. Uh, easy peasy. And we'll say bank area. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created a couple methods to convert all that block uh, code into two simple lines. So we have a chop tree method and a bank method, which you can see down here. I've also added two null checks, one for the tree and one for the banker. It's always a good idea to check if the tree is null, because if the tree is null, uh, then there's obviously no tree to chop, which would be a problem. So I make sure to do that in both now, and those are simplified. So now we just have our walking method and our banking method. All right, so I've gone ahead and actually uh, changed around my tree area because the last area wasn't that good. So as you can see, the inventory has now gotten full as it chopped the last log, and the script is now running back to the bank. Obviously, the walking method isn't amazing. Uh, it's kind of iffy. It's not really walking as soon as we're stopping walking. Uh, however, a more advanced walking method will come in a later tutorial video. Um, so as we can see, it will go into the bank, bank the items, oh, it's messed up, okay, well I'm just going to help it out here, because sometimes the uh, .get random tile, which I'm using, uh, changes that. Anyway, so it's going to bank on the banker, deposit all except for the X, and go back and continue the same loop over and over and over again. So yeah, that sums up our simple woodcutter. If you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know. Otherwise, I won't continue this series, uh, and we'll cover some other things if you did enjoy this. Peace.